today with Amy Rowland, uh, as you can see, of Pangea, who I will introduce in a minute. Um, if you've been here before, you know we, we really hope to add value to your work with these uh, Lunch and Learns. So please ask questions. And we hope you walk away with real solutions to real problems. Um, at the end of the webinar, Nancy Douglas will give a quick demo on one of our uh, newer features that really helps out with training and deployment of a field team, which is called um, scheduling. So you can now schedule surveys and use them almost as a task list. So Nancy will show that at the end of the webinar today. My name is Kristen Hazard. I am the founder and CEO of WildNote. I am here with Jeff Aramospe, our Chief Revenue Officer. Hello, and everybody. I am also here with somebody who was called a rock star today, uh, Nancy Douglas, who is our Chief Customer Success, happiness all around uh, awesome person who works with the customers. So thank you, Nancy, for joining us. Thank you. Um, Please use the chat window to interact and post questions, and please use the Q&A window for technical questions. If you've not completed the poll yet, which um, half of you have so far, please go ahead and do that. That's very helpful to us. And now I will stop sharing slides. Um, I'm going to introduce Amy. So we're excited to have an award-winning guest here today. Amy Rowland, CEO and President of Pangea Biological. Uh, here are a few awards she's won. Supplier of the Year Class 2 by WeBank West. That's a pretty big deal. Uh, nominated for San Diego Gas and Electric's Best in Class Award and awarded SBE WBE of the Year by the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power. So power, power, power. She is responsible for quality assurance, quality control, contract execution, and performance, and oversees all business aspects of Pangea Biological. With 30 years of experience in the energy and infrastructure sectors, Amy has managed a full range of projects, including biological resource assessments, environmental compliance programs, environmental training programs, planning, regulatory agency strategy coordination, and permitting, and constructability assessments. So right in line with all the things environmental consultants have to do. Um, and she's a team building machine as we will find out about. And I just like to make a note, I think Amy and Wild Note have kind of been circling each other for, I don't know, a couple of years now. And, um, you know, shout out to Wild Note. We got her over on the platform recently, which means uh, that was a good day for us. We thought, okay, we're starting to build some more value uh, to bring on someone who's very deliberate and technical in her choices. So that's awesome. Welcome, Amy, and thank you for being here today. Thanks so much, Kristen. Really happy to be here with you all. And I love Wild Notes, so it's great to be here with all of you. Oh, yeah, okay. it has been a few years. I think we started talking in 2016. Yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad we stayed on your radar and made it work. So Absolutely. Uh, as you all know, we like to start our uh, off. We like to start off with stories from the field. So, Amy, what you got for us? Well, you know, I've been doing this for for a few years, and uh, we were just talking about tortoises a bit before this. But I, I would say, um, you know, one of my favorite encounters as a wildlife biologist was when I encountered uh, desert tortoise, two desert tortoise that were mating out in the Barstow area. And uh, just really kind of a cool, cool experience to, you know, doing desert tortoise surveys, looking for them. And uh, we found them and, and, and they were mating and not something you come across very often. So uh, just seeing behavior, animal behavior at yeah. its best. So that was, that, was, that was, I think, probably one of my coolest moments. So are they real slow movers? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> They're pretty slow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of assumed they were. But. Yeah, it's like a long, it's a long process. Like <laughs> once you find them, you're not gonna lose them. <laughs> no, you didn't, you know, you know, you could probably come back in 30 minutes and they were still there. So. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thanks for that. And uh, Jeff, you want to get us started on the problem solved? Sure, sure thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, but I guess the first question I'd like to ask is, did you give the tortoises their privacy? I mean, I think that's <laughs> yes. what everybody yes. wants to know. So, well, okay. it was it was kind of awkward. I'm not going to lie to you. You know, <laughs> like, well, what you know, what do you, what do we do in this situation? You know, so exactly. I, I, that was pre-digital cameras, so that was way that was you know 1990. 
five, I think, or so. So um, took a couple pictures. So I still have those. I have those photos. So nice. Yeah. That's Game great. That's great. Well, good. Well, uh, thank you for being with us. We really appreciate you being here, and of course, uh, your business. So um, the the first question I kind of want to try and set the stage here a little bit is that. Um, we're hearing from a lot of environmental consulting firms that we talk to, both customers and prospects, uh, that number one, they're all very exceptionally busy right now. Um, that you know, 2021 was a pretty big year all the way around. Um, infrastructure bill just passed, and now there's all this more work potentially flowing into their pipeline. Um, and I mean, are you seeing the same thing? Is that you know, does that align with kind of your assessment of what 2022 looks like uh, from an environmental consulting business perspective? Yeah, no, that's a great question, Jeff, and and definitely um, the work is uh, there's a lot of work. I think um, you know the outlook for I think now for the next you know five to ten years with the you know the clean energy transition as well. So you know traditional energy, um, you know big companies that hadn't been in that are now you know really clearly making that transition. So you have that combined with the infrastructure bill. Um, and just a lot of needs to to enhance our infrastructure and to get kind of more progressive with it. So so we're definitely uh, seeing that. Yeah. So I guess that begs the question: um, Are there enough people to do the work? Um, how do you find people to you know satisfy all the opportunity that you have sitting in front of you right now? You know that. It, it is, it is a challenging thing. I think it's a challenging thing, no matter what industry you're in right now, you know, the great resignation and, and, and with COVID and you combine those two things and then with the level of work and, you know, supply chain and there's so many things. So, you know, I think it's all about, um, you know, uh, networking, um, staying connected with people that you've been connected with a long time. Mm -hmm. And also um, just, you know, um, looking for that top talent that, yeah. You know, to find kind of a balance, I think, is right. really important, you know, um, because it's it's more about, you know, the work life balance for people, too. Right. So so the shift has really happened and and just being, I think, flexible to 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 that is really important. Right. So there, there's few, fewer people out there to hire. You're all fighting for the same people. Um, and then, you know, I would imagine that you frequently have new opportunities come up. You've got to get a team together, ready to go and out. So assuming you can find the people. You know, how do you train them? I mean, what do you do? What's the process that you go through before throwing them out on the job site um, and, uh, and, and, and moving forward with the project? Yeah, you know, so, so the training is key, right? So, you know, uh, training and consistency. So somebody might be coming on that might have many years of experience because typically our field folks, you know, minimum 10, 12 years of experience. So they're highly experienced working on a field project somewhere else. And so, taking those skills that they have and then applying it to the projects that we're working on and then enhancing them with kind of our own um, requirements and bringing them up to speed is, is really critical. And so, I, you know, again, consistency, um, giving them the tools that they need and the technology are really key. Um, we're in a time where everybody's relying on technology. Um, and so as long as that technology is working seamlessly um, and it's a consistent message that they're getting from us, so utilizing, you know, we we try to utilize all the technology that we have. While right. Note One, you know, Microsoft Teams is a huge part of our uh, daily operations, and then, um, you know, uh, consistent messaging to everybody and communications. So we're yeah. we kind of over communicated our company, I think, uh, right. to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Mm -hmm. so, so so how do you execute that? I mean, what does that actually look like? I mean, I know you've you've referenced, you know, SOPs before, you know, kind. Of, Describe a little bit more about, you know, how you what you've created in order to facilitate the training of those folks. Yeah, so SOPs are kind of, you know, the bread and butter. So, you know, I like to call it putting the banana nut bread recipe, right? Making the banana nut recipe making the banana nut bread. And if you leave out the egg, what do you have? So you really have to make sure that your steps are all clearly defined and that you have um, examples. You have examples, you have, uh, what we'll do is when we're doing training is we'll record the training, then we'll create a transcript. And so we're able to put those into the actual SOPs that are part of our kind of our team's onboarding. So mm -hmm. we have two things. We have Microsoft Teams for onboarding, bringing you up to speed on kind of the Pangea way and how we operate, as well as we have teams for individual projects. Yeah. And so because you can't boilerplate everything on a project. So there's a lot of similarities. You can utilize that, but you need to customize for each one. And I think that's really important that you tweak it according to the needs of the project, the team, 
the client, the conditions out in the field, and you have to utilize all those, but you have to have a central, basically a central library. And so that's where Teams is really uh, kind of key for us and WildNote as well, as well as other apps we use too. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you, you just mentioned the Pangea way. Um, can you, you know, describe what is the Pangea way? Good question. So, so we always call, you know, it's the Pangea way. It's, it's, it's our company culture. It's, um, you know, basically, you know, the way that we operate is we want to make sure that each of our team members um, can sleep at night, mm -hmm. you know, that they get their head back on the pillow and they sleep at night and they sleep at night, not only physically, but are they good with what the decisions are that they made during the day? Are we good with the decisions we made for ourselves, for our team, for our clients, and then collectively, is that in alignment with where we are as a company? And does it line up with our, our core values, you know, with mm -hmm. integrity, quality, teamwork, and commitment being part of that? And, and that's really kind of the key of how we operate. It, it needs to line up with that for us to really, I think, have a successful team and have a successful uh, project for a client. All right. And so I imagine all of that sort of winds its way through all of your training materials, all your SOPs, all that good stuff. Yeah, it, again, it's back to consistency, right? Yep. Consistency, yep. consistency. So you see the same thing over again, and it's um, how can we make this easy? How yep. can we make it so it's um, intuitive, right? Yep. So people see that and understand like, oh, wait, I just do that. Or, you know, and, it, and again, it's repetition. So for example, we also use a safety, a safety app. And so mm -hmm. there's repetition in that. Yep. They, it's predictable. They yep. see yep. that. They know what's coming and they know how to react to what they're going to see. So again, it just provides ease to the people in the field, to our leadership team, um, to the client and collectively everyone. And so hopefully it leads to success. Yeah, that's great. Amy, so, what, um, what is your typical size or range of sizes of teams that you deploy out to the field? So, I mean, it can be, uh, that's a great question. So, so when it's a one, uh, say it's a one person job. So, mm -hmm. right, there's different requirements, but still the consistency is there. And then, you know, we can deploy up to 20 people in the field on a field project. Mm -hmm. um, and again, we want the messaging to be very clear, right? Mm -hmm. We don't want people playing the telephone game out there because what, oh, wait, he said this, she said that. There's always a, a library, a data yeah. source. Where do you go for the information? And the SOB is the place to go for the information. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of the SOP too, I just want to say is that, um, you know, as things change, that changes too. People in the field can make those changes to the SOP. Mm. We can make changes so that there's improvements that are made. It's real time. It's not like, oh, wait, I'm looking at something that's outdated. This says from 1997. Mm -hmm. So it's updated and then the new, and it's just real time. So, so living, there's breathing, mm -hmm. living, breathing document essentially. Mm -hmm. And how, um, when you do have a new project coming up, do you have like tricks with respect to the technology to be able to deploy that new project quickly or deploy new people onto the project quickly? Like, how do you deal with that? Or, or do you just not take projects that are like, have to start in two days? You know what I mean? Like, what's that look like for you? Yeah. The <laughs> the trick is to be flexible, right? And um, again, I'll go back to the SOP's consistency. So utilizing the technology that we, we do, we found successful. Mm -hmm. Wild note, um, our safe, you know, our key ones are really all the Microsoft applications we utilize. Um, Wild note, um, uh, our, our GIS applications, and then our safety. And right. if you have those pieces of the puzzle, that makes the success of something so much easier, whether you need to mobilize in two days, 20 days, two months, and just planning ahead and being able to make tweaks along the way. So, yeah. um, you know, so, and just being able to be flexible and pivot, you know, and I think that's what's key. But I think if people know that they have those tools to use and available to them and that there's a consistency and there's an example so they're not, you're not just handing them say, Hey, you know, you need to, you need to create this type of report, show me mm -hmm. what I need to do. Yeah. And then, and then create into duplicate of that. And then they can utilize past information and customize it accordingly. Do you have kind of a base uh, set of surveys that you kind of start from any, any new project that comes along, or do you go to like your past project and start from that latest one? Or how, how do you approach that? 
So yeah, that's a great question. So we often go to one in the past because what we like to do is when we've had a project previously, we like to take what are the lessons learned? Right. What, you know, what's the debrief after that project? What did we learn? What could we have done differently? How could we have improved? What, it, what are some things that happened in the field? So we do this long debrief um, that our folks fill out and you know from technology to communications to safety to equipment all across the board and so um, taking that and applying that to the next project if applicable yeah. is really I think one of the keys that um, but you shouldn't have to start over again right to build on you, the success I, I remember at the beginning you said let's build a kitchen sink compliance form oh right <laughs> Right, right. Because I, I, I'm like, if if you have it all there, and then you could just tease out what you don't need for that particular project mm -hmm. instead of having to rethink it and think, oh wait, mm -hmm. what what else do I need? So then you kind of pare it down according to the needs of each project. So I, 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 I really believe in that. <clears throat> so. Um... Uh, earlier, you had mentioned, and this is something that I, I really like, and it kind of resonated with me, um, is that um, uh, you, you said you want to help your employees sleep better at night, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I just I kind of wanted to come back to that a little bit, um, because you know that sort of ties into um, a little bit of, um, uh, you know, obviously, we're a technology company. We're talking a lot about how you use technology to support this. How do you see, you know, sort of the technology piece um, helping with that. And I guess in a broader sense is, um, you know, do you find that the technology that you're using, does it help you recruit better candidates? I mean, is your use of technology um, a key part of the way you recruit, you know, uh, environmental professionals, field people, you know, whatever, to come in, come into Pangea? Is it, is it a part of your overall process there? I think it is because it's a standardization, right? So, mm -hmm. so you know, people want to know what what am I going to be responsible for when I come in? How am I going to have to report my daily activities? Um, this question came up very recently about um, w one of our partners, um, you know, and and utilizing maybe like a word report in the field. Yep. Well, utilizing a word report, if you if you're having them work on a device, you know, because all of our team has I iPhones and iPads, and if you're asking them to really get into typing a a report and utilizing Word and trying to do all that, it's just not efficient. So then there it, it, there's this level of frustration. Right. And, and so, you know, our job is to make it easier, as easy as possible for them in the field. And if we're giving them um, reporting requirements or different things that are not, again, intuitive and easy to use and that they can just use it on their device. The same thing with when you take your photos and it just goes right into their daily report instead of them having to worry about like, oh, wait, where are my photos and how am I going to deal with this? That's a nice thing about Wild Note, too, because we use the autolite and so you know which mm -hmm. which marks you know and and so again that's another one of our you know parts of our we have an sop on that so we have an sop kind of on everything but mm -hmm. um <laughs> you know because because it's you know easier to do it that way so I, I do think it plays into that um somebody knowing you know because we have a few folks that are on our team that have been around for for quite some time and so maybe are not as tech um you know their tech is not their you know, they're not as tech savvy, perhaps. So once you start uh, giving them something so easy to mm -hmm. use, like, you know, Wild Note or a safety app or whatever we're using, it's just like, oh, well, yeah, of course. You know, it's like clicking a button and turning on Netflix, right? Kind of, or, or sending a text, so. Mm -hmm. I have a question uh, about the safety app, Amy. Is that commercially available? It is, yes. It's a safety meeting app. Safety meeting app, I'll put that in the chat. Thanks for that, Nancy. Do you, how much oversight do you have out with your field staff, uh, Amy? What's that look like for you guys? So our project management team, um, so, uh, so our way of uh, communication daily is really, um, we rely on text. So group text um, okay. for each, each project. And so that's the way that we do communicating for projects, you know, instant kind of communication. And and really the folks that we hire, you know, like I said, when they're in the field, minimum typically 10 years of experience when they're doing compliance projects. So they're highly experienced. So, you know, the types of questions that come up are really about in the moment, 
a request by the client or construction, we need yeah. extra workspace or we, you know, or they had yeah. a spill that came up or, you know, an unanticipated discovery or something like that. But for the most part, um, we have ongoing communications daily, our, our leadership team does with our team, but it's really more of checking in, how's everybody doing and not, um, not, you know, there shouldn't be any big surprises if everybody's communicating. So each project has a group text thread with everyone on the project or just yes. leadership? Yeah, that's a great question. So each of our projects has the senior team on the text thread mm -hmm. as well as the project uh, team members. Okay. And so that way, anybody on the senior team, if somebody's busy and a question comes in, any of those folks can respond and offer support. Whatever right. a question comes up and they need a file, or, or right. a question comes up from construction or landowner issue, for example, because uh, that comes up quite a bit too. So then they're able to communicate with the entire senior team and then somebody can jump in and offer help. So, okay, so construction monitoring, you gotta have usually a person there monitoring. Can I clone the person <laughs> to be like three people in three different sites at once? So. How do you scale construction monitoring when you when you need a person there? You know, because we think technology can really make it so you can scale your business. But is that is that a bottleneck there with the construction monitoring? You know, so, so that's an interesting question. So you know, some projects really want heavy monitoring where they want a, a an environmental person with every crew. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, it, you really have to look at the agency requirements for that, you know, are, are they requiring that? Um, but it's all about communication, establishing kind of credibility with the project team in the field, construction, um, finding common ground, communicating with them, not being, um, not watching them make a mistake. Our goal and our, you know, objective is to make sure that they don't make a mistake. Right. And that's what we're there for. And if you can establish common ground and good communication protocols with the construction engineering and other team members, then they come to you because they have a question rather than, um, you know, they're, they're afraid that they're going to get shut down. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've seen over the years is just really, if you can establish that. And sometimes it's, sometimes it can be challenging. There's some, some players that just, you know, um, you know, don't want to play and, and they can be, get a bit rogue out there. But again, just finding common ground, letting them know that you're there to help them and not stop them. Right. Um, and that, you know, you're there to help point out what are the rules. They're the experts at building the project. You're the experts for environmental. And then of course, there's all the safety people that are experts. And if right. you collaborate and work together, um, you know, we, you know, we like to really say that, you know, our, our job is to help our clients um, stay out of environmental jail. So I think That's what good. you're saying is as you build better, stronger, more collaborative relationships with the construction crews, you actually might not need someone right on the crew if it's not part of the permit, right? That you have to, you, because you're, you've got communication going, people are asking questions ahead of time and not getting to that point of, of problems. Is that essentially the point? Yes, right? and mutual respect, right? right? Mm -hmm. So, so as long as they know that you, res you respect what their responsibility is and what they're doing, yeah. and you're going to be there for a sounding board, a safety net to help them, you know, remind them, Hey, minding your P's and Q's and making sure you, they stay in their lane. Yeah. I think that's really important. So, so then, you know, because if you're just, if you have to be at every single spot, you know, you, you can't necessarily repli replicate that. Now, there yeah. are some projects where, of course, you have to, right? You if do. it's DC specific and you absolutely have to, you can't be there. But, but if you can have that communication, I think um, we've really seen great success with that. You know, it's like they'll text, they'll call, they'll say, hey, you know, I see something over here. Can you come take a look? I'm not sure what it is. And you don't want to discount it, right? right. You never want to discount it. You want to give it the attention. Um, it may not be that important. But to them, it was important enough to call you and you need right. to give that level of um, attention. Yeah, and respect. Yep. Yep. Jeff, before I close the poll, got any other questions that we wanna? Um, I, I don't think so. I think, uh, Amy, you 
gave us some great advice today. Um, and, you know, I think what I heard is uh, build a good foundation um, and uh, with the set of appropriate SOPs. I was curious if you had an SOP for writing SOPs, but you know, <laughs> we can cover that later. Sort of a meta I do. question. I do, I, I, I do. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not surprised. And I wrote an <laughs> SOP for WildNote too. So I, I, nice, nice. And I got, I, got to see, I got to see the SOP. It's really powerful. Yep. Yep. It's a really powerful concept. What about an SOP for making coffee at the office? No, no, no. No. <laughs> you know, Amy, a lot of your processes, we, we do very similar things in uh, software development, actually, right? It's very agile. We're always learning. We have rituals at the beginning and ending of projects, right? And you just sort of keep flowing, following those rituals, and, you, and it offers uh, the opportunity for continuous improvement with the team. So um, it sounds very software oriented. Um, so thanks for that. Uh, so I'm going to end the poll and uh, let's see here. We've got, um, oh, 40, 80% of you here are environmental consultants. Um, your primary role, uh, number one primary role on the poll is project manager. Um, and which would make sense, especially for this, uh, this one, because they're in charge of training usually. But we also have a um, pretty good mix. We've got 15% principals, owners, 30% um, team leads, which I'm guessing that means they're not quite at project manager level, but they're like running the team maybe out in the field. Um, and then um, do your companies write SOPs? Good question. 63% do. Um, 24% no, and 13% I don't know. So I'm thinking that's a no too. Um, and then um, do you have dedicated staff for onboarding? 67% yes. Uh, and then what is the level of that staff? And um, that is team lead. So that's, that's the poll. Um, so Amy, thank you so much for joining us today. I know people really gain a lot of value from hearing um, from their peers out, you know, they don't want to hear us going on and on, they want to hear you, right? So we just really appreciate you taking the time and sharing your expertise um, on how you've built this amazing company. Uh, so thanks for that. And if you want to contact um, Amy, uh, can I, I'm giving your email right now, Amy. So sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's Amy at Pangea Biological, and that is P A N G E A biological.com and A M Y. So, demo time. So, there's uh, some folks, I think, on this uh, Lunch and Learn who probably are not familiar with WildNote. So, very quick top level overview WildNote is um, both a web application and an app for iOS and Android devices that you can download from the Play Stores for use um, for field data collection. And those, uh, the iOS and Android apps work offline. Uh, when you have connectivity, the data you collect in the field then gets synced back to the web. The web is used for your project management. It's used for your project setup, for your um, post-processing QA, QC, and exporting of your um, data. So what you're seeing on the screen right now is a project listing page. And I have three projects up right now in my sandbox. And uh, you can start a new project. We are project, we have a project-based context, um, which is specific to the environmental work that you folks do, knowing that that's the way that things are usually organized. So within a project, you've got um, your basic project info, any types of locations you might be dealing with. Um, you select the specific forms that you're going to be using for that project. We referenced earlier the kitchen sink form for compliance that Amy uh, developed at Pangea that she can pull in and then modify, which you can do in WildNote very easily. You can, you can duplicate your, your forms. You can modify them to suit specific projects. Coming soon will be the ability to duplicate an entire project. Kristen's, Kristen and Dev team are working on that right now. You've got your exports. There's about, mm, I think, 17 export types now in WildNote that you can use. Everything from your standard survey uh, compilation report, which is for a daily report, to a narrative report where you can pull in data for narrative purposes, um, more of a report writing uh, type of thing, to uh, KML exports, GDB exports for your GIS things, all kinds of things, really specific exports like uh, US Army Corps wetland exports, cultural reporting for various states, those types of things. 
We then have who's working on the project and what role do they get? And then um, project documents, tax on favorites and scheduling. So I wanna kind of focus on these three things down here. So uh, that's a little overview for you. And what I wanna talk about is how can this help you mobilize your team faster and uh, more um, consistent with data. So um, there's a few tricks that you can use WildNote for. So the first one is that you can create a project that's just for your standard company forms. So right within WildNote, we have, um, right within WildNote, we have forms that, uh, let me show you the list of forms that are in this project right now. For example, a COVID daily screening form, a tailgate meeting form, safety meeting, timesheet. You can build anything that you want in WildNote, but these are things that are available right from our WildNote library. So right away, you can get some consistency, just what Amy was talking about in terms of SOP and pulling these types of forms in and having everybody using those when they're in the field. So you can create that and attach all, all of your people to that particular project. So anytime they're working in the field, they have access to that. From there, um, you can utilize scheduling, which Kristen was referencing before. So going into this construction compliance project, scheduling um, is one of the options under project admin. So it's a setup feature. And uh, what I've already scheduled out a survey for myself so you can see what this looks like. But basically you'd pick your user, you would pick which form in that project you want them to fill out, what date you want them to be filling that form out on and what date you want that to be available. So maybe you're setting up for Monday and you want everything to be available for them uh, on the previous Friday. So you can put a different date available for that. If you want them to fill out a form that's specific to a particular location like substation A, you're gonna be working there on Monday and Tuesday. Here's what you've got to fill out. Then you can pick that as well, as long as you've set that up uh, in, in WildNote specifically. So you can see I've scheduled something out for Monday and it shows up on the calendar here. And what's nice is that the users receive an email um, they'll get the email, <clears throat> two emails. If you're scheduling in advance, they'll receive an email that lets them know what's upcoming. They'll also get an email the day before. It'll tell them what they're going to be um, asked to fill out and then what the steps are to get that onto their mobile device and what the expectations are in terms of getting that data filled out and back to the project management team. Now, in addition to that, you can also put in your own custom language. This is standard language that WildNote has developed for this particular a template that your users would receive, but you can also um, add custom information to that through the project admin info tab. So you can come into the advanced settings and um, put in whatever information you would like to be included in that email. So some companies might have really specific um, ways that they want their employees to interact with the people who are there um, on the job site for that week, or maybe they know that specific people will be on the job site for that week and they want to inform their employees of that. Whatever it is that you'd like to let your folks know, you can update the scheduler copy whenever you want to, to um, send that out to your employees. So that's scheduling. Now, another thing that's really great is the project uh, dashboard. And the dashboard is found under the project data side. And the dashboard's a great way to keep track in real time of what's happening with your field staff. So as a project manager, you can come in and see how much data has been submitted, who has been submitting the data. So this is survey submitted by user. You can change the time frame for this, what the status of that data is. And we'll talk about survey status in a minute. Um, are there any issues that have come up? In WildNote, you can flag answers to questions and those will appear in this issue tracker. So if you have some hot button topics uh, on, a, on a job site that you wanna make sure that you're following up on, you can flag those answers and those will show up right here in the issue tracker and you can click on these surveys to go right to the surveys and get the information. So this is a great project management tool in a way that you can really have real-time communication with your field staff and keep uh, on top of what's happening, another tool to keep on top of what's happening out there. In addition to that, we have some other tools that will help your staff kind of get up to speed more quickly. Uh, we have project documents where you can upload any document that's relevant to that specific project. It could be previously collected data. It could be a map of the area. It could be a, a project permit. It could be the list of measures. It could be really anything that, that the mobile device can read. You can load up from project documents. Be an SOP. Yeah. So could that's be a release a, to construction. Yeah. Exactly. So it allows, uh, again, 
um, consistent communication across all team members. So if you have 20 people working on this project, you're loading these documents in one spot and everybody's going to get them when they sync their, their mobile devices. Mm -hmm. Another thing is taxon favorites. Uh, Wildland has a really robust taxonomy framework. It's very unique to our company. And you can, if, if you know in advance what species you need your team to keep an eye out for, maybe you have some young people could just come out of school, maybe they're, or they've just moved into the area, right? And they're not really familiar with the plant species that they might find there or the animal species they might find. You can put those in in advance. Those will uh, populate to the top of the species list in the individual forms that are being used. And that's a helpful way to you know, teach your uh, new field staff. So those are a few project-based ideas. Now, there's also things you can do from an individual survey form basis when you're setting up your project that are helpful. And now let me show you what that looks like on the mobile device. Um, one is helper text. So if you have a project where you're dealing with a lot of different measures, let me get my mobile up here. Uh, for example, you're in a construction compliance project. We'll come into this monitoring form. You can put in helper text. Um, you can actually put in the specific detailed measures. So let's go down to Burling Owl. And whenever you see a little eye here, that means there's extra information that you can touch the eye and get that. So in this case, we put in a specific measure with the details that have to be conformed to on this particular project for burrowing owls. So that's a really great way to train your field staff and to help them when they're in the field to know exactly what they're monitoring for. And you can do that for any kinds of questions. Um, I'm just using the measure example for, for construction compliance. Another is answer choice definitions. So um, I'm gonna back out of here and go to the wetland project. Um, if you have a list of answers in their specific uh, definitions that would be helpful to your field staff, for example, if you're doing wetland work, um, the definitions for hydrology indicators, and I'll show you what that looks like. And again, these show up as the little eyes. So if we come into uh, this particular arid west form, come down to hydrology, you can see there's little helper eyes here on the actual uh, individual definition. So if we pop into that, then the user would get a definition of what that answer choice is. So those are some ways, again, that you can kind of train your new staff. Um, and again, hopefully that yields data consistency and accuracy in the field. Nancy, can um, I jump in here? So yeah. um, also uh, even stepping back, just by making things drop down choices or radio buttons, you then force specific spellings and specific answers to questions and your project managers don't have to deal with hand typed information that is inconsistent across the project. So really utilizing just as simple as drop down lists and radio buttons can really save your PM a lot of work. Yeah, that's a great, great point. Um, the final two things I'll cover uh, before wrapping up are um, required fields. Another thing that you can do when you're building a form is make a field required. That means that a user can't save and exit that form without um, actually filling in that field. So that's really good when you're trying to train people and make sure that they're capturing all the field data that they need to capture when they're in the field, not getting back to the office going, ah, oh, God, I forgot to take that picture or whatever the thing would be that would be very important. So that's something that, that is built in, baked into WildNote. And then the final thing is a concept called survey status. And that's a useful tool to track the data lifecycle and to create, again, an opportunity for communication between people working in the field and those who are working in the office. With survey status, you can mark um, a survey one of seven statuses, including scheduled. And I'll show you what that looks like on the website as well. So scheduled is what gets marked when you are scheduling surveys out. Those, the survey will have a scheduled um, flag on it. Draft is typical in the field when you're working on something mid, you know, midday, you're going to have it marked as draft. When you're ready to submit, you can change it to submitted. If there's open issues that you're aware of, you can mark it as open issues, et cetera. I think you guys probably get the point. There's some other uh, really great features that go with that um, with, the, with the survey status and the, and the tool as well. Um, so that's a, another great way to help train your people. And um, to show you what that looks like on mobile. Let me get back out of here. Um, 
you can see here's an example of how the survey status is displayed on mobile. So it helps visually track things as well. And then on the web, I think we have it in here. Uh, yeah, you can see here the status column as well. You can sort by this too, and you can see what's been scheduled out. So that's a little bit about survey status. So um, let me check chat, make sure there's no contextual questions. We're good. I've We're been good. watching. I've been right. watching that. We're in good shape. All right. Okay, I, cool. I, I, I do want to say just kind of to wrap up on top of this is that, you know, everything that we're showing you here is about number one, about quality and consistency of that quality. Um, if you can stop mistakes from the very start, that means everything as it flows all the way through is going to be of higher quality and the higher quality is the less time you have to spend fixing it and the more efficient you are. So again, quality, consistency, and efficiency, those three things go together and it's I'd say it's our middle name, but it's three names. So probably doesn't make much sense. Right. So um, just FYI, we will be at these upcoming um, conferences. If you are there, we'll let us buy you a drink. Let's go out and uh, hang out. Um, also, uh, just wanted to let you know, I'm, I'm adding a new segment, which is my going to be my favorite new features because we are always adding new features to the platform and um, super stoked to have implemented color scheme on the compilation PDF export. You can now put your color scheme into that daily export um, to make it more branded like your business. Uh, also, we are very excited to be um, pushing out Android Smart Sync. So um, Android Users getting the love right now. Usually it's the iOS getting all the love, but Android gets the first revision of Smart Sync, which will auto sync your data. And I can tell you, project managers, you're going to love this because your field staff won't forget to sync because as soon as they're online, we will auto sync things for them. So that's very cool. Um, also, more information around the syncing process, which can be kind of confusing. I'll tell you, syncing, it's not rocket science, but it ain't super easy because you know what you all do? You're driving down the road, you got 100 pictures in your survey, and you click the sync button. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> so um, taxon framework improvements and also scheduler uh, improvements are coming out. So those are our new features. And with that, we will end the uh, webinar today. Um, Unless I'm missing something here. Actually, could, could you go back to your presentation? We did miss one thing, which is our upcoming lunch and learn event. Oh, Maybe okay, Skip great. that slide, yeah. Okay, let's go back to that. Yep. And there it is. Yep. So next one is March 10th. Um, we're gonna talk about uh, project execution and better business processes. So we'll be very much building on what we um, talked about today. Um, but then we're also announcing a, a new uh, feature. So last year we did lunch and learns every month. We've decided to do them every other month this year. And in the intervening months, we've added a, uh, a program we're calling Wild Note Live uh, for lack of better uh, name, which, but I think it's a good one. Uh, and this will be a live product overview from Nancy that will talk through how the product actually works in specific environments. So um, February 10th, we're going to do one around construction compliance focused on nesting bird monitoring, since nesting bird season starts uh, just, what, about a week later, I think. Um, on April 14th, we'll talk about wetlands um, with a focus on mitigation banking and some interesting things we're doing around success criteria measurement. And then in June, uh, we'll be back on the archaeology train and talk about CRM and some of our capabilities there. So new things, look for the announcements on this. We'd love to have you join us for those as well. All right. Thank you, Jeff. And thank you, you everyone for joining us. And once again, thank you, Amy. Good to see your smiling face and we'll see you on the interwebs. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.